Andrew. Um, uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, add this video to my YouTube channel because um, you were a really important part of me getting my contractor's license, whether you know it or not. Um, this business, Contractors Intelligence School here in California, is a big reason why I was able to pass my test, um, know how to be prepared going into my test, and so you know, I went and got my C20 license, which was my HVAC license, and then a couple years later, just recently, I went and got my C10 electrical license, and uh, you guys helped me get there. I get questions all the time on my YouTube channel, like how, uh, how can I get my license in California? So I just wanted to kind of come over here and ask you guys some questions, and uh, so um, if you're ready, I wanted to ask you some questions. Sure, let's go. So. Um, First of all, just kind of tell us a little bit about um, Contractors Intelligence School and like um, how you got started and um, how, to, how you guys got to where you are now. Well, Contractors Intelligence School, awesome place to be. Uh, mainly because I look at the facts. I like numbers a lot. So facts say that if you go into the state and take the exam for the contractor's license, half the people that walk in will walk out of there upset because they failed the test. Right. We hopefully make that, uh, make a change there. So, once you complete our program, right, you have a 98% chance to pass on your first shot. Yeah, it says that on your website, that 98% of the people pass the test on the first try, so. And actually some, in a lot of cases, it's actually higher. We, you know, we kind of give benefit of the doubt there. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Do you get into the contracting school business because you're, you're like sincerely trying to help people pass their tests and stuff, or what? Here's the deal. I'm the instructor. I love when people succeed. That puts a smile on my face. Your success, Greg, man, that, that was really good. Uh, everyone who walks in through here and passes their test, that's how I measure my success. Yours. It sounds a little cliche, believe it or not, but it's a good measure. That's how I live. Nice. So it sounds like you really are interested in us passing our test and it's stuff. It's the only like goal. That. It's one goal we share, I believe. So, um, I'll, I'll let you know how I found you guys. Like, uh, I was working for another company, and, you know, I had this, like, entrepreneur brainstorm. Like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to start my own business, and, like, how do I do it, you know? So, so I just started looking for, like, contractor school here in Rancho Cordova and uh, Sacramento area of California. And I just happened to run across your school, and um, the picture was on there, and it was like, oh, I know that building. I drive by that building all the time, you know? So, um so I was able to pretty easily find you, but I get questions all the time on my YouTube channel, like, um, you know, how, how can I go about getting my, my, my license here in California? And so I always tell them, go to Contractors Intelligence School, tell Andrew that I sent you, you know, please let them know that I sent you and they'll take good care of you, you know? So, um, but if somebody wants to be a contractor, um, like what requirements are needed to get your contractor's license here um, in California? Some really basic things, fundamentals. One, you've got to be at least 18. A very big thing is to have four years of experience. That means you're doing the work at a journeyman level. That's very important. And then it's just a matter of just wanting to do it. You want to go after and get your license. Like, what if you don't have the four years of, of, of experience? Does college count at all? Mm -hmm. There are certain times when uh, your experience could be substituted, college degrees account, but you got to be very careful. They can come count up to three years. So depending on which degree you have, the state will make that decision. So yeah, you got to look out for that. A right. basic uh, business degree would get you about two years. That's just uh, generally accepted. And that's typically like a four years in school, right? Correct. About that's what I heard years. was that it was like for every two years of school you have, you could probably get about one year of Across. credit. Uh, now keep in mind, state. if you have a degree in about German polka history, you're not going to get two years. So let's keep that in mind, right? <laughs> so it has to be specific to the preferable trade that you're uh, trying to get to. So, <laughs> um, what if I've been? What if I've never worked for somebody else? What if I've been self-employed like the whole time? I've been working for myself, doing general contracting. All right. Well, self-employed experience is accepted by the state. You got to be careful how you uh, present that. Um, Generally, because that's the law. You get the contractor's license because any jobs exceeding $500 or more labor and materials require a license. There we go. But self-employed experience, all your jobs under 500 no problem. Good to go. 
let me back up just a little bit. Um, is Contractors Intelligence School just for people in California, or do you guys have? Uh, can I can I use you guys outside of, outside of the state of California? Mm -hmm. Currently, we're only in California. Okay, so right now you're in here in California. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so I know for myself, like just filling out the application alone was exhausting. Um, it was it's a multi-page application, and they make you they make it seem like if you don't fill it out perfectly right that they're going to reject it to you, which can actually waste a lot of time, huh? Correct. Uh, the application process, uh, on average, is anywhere between four to eight weeks. But a big thing is you, yes, you pretty much hit it on the nail there. You want to fill it out properly and make sure all your signatures there, nothing is left blank. And you know what? That's something we help you with. So we yeah. make it as flawless or as seam seamless as possible. Yeah, I, re I remember that when I wanted to fill out my application. Actually, both times, both applications that I filled out for you, um, I had questions about it. I simply came in and asked you guys, and you looked at my, re uh, I think you even said, hey, before you're done, let me take a look at your review, your application. I'll review it, and that way we're not wasting any time. Because Correct. how much time could that waste if, if you mail it in, and then you're waiting for it to sit on somebody's desk, and then it gets mailed back to you rejected? How, I mean, how much time would that take? take? Well, uh, depending, it really depends. Unfortunately with the state, a lot of things depend. <laughs> Timing is a big issue. Uh, if you can get it in right away and you respond quickly, uh, it doesn't slow down your application process, doesn't speed it up, but if they send it back for any corrections, yeah, that can delay you another week or two, just depending on, you know, snail mail. Yeah, right. We don't want that happening. It seemed like with me, um, the application sat on their desk for like a month before it got back to me that the application was even accepted um, and that they're reviewing it. Right. And then it was like another month before they said, you know, something else like go get your background check done and all this stuff. Um, and it seemed like every time I turned the paper paperwork or whatever information they were looking for, it seemed like whatever information I turned in, it, it was taking like three to four weeks before they respond, you know, got back to me and let me know what the next step was. So, Well, different times of the year, of course, different things happen. True. So uh, sometimes you can get an application in and have a test within the first four weeks. Sometimes True. you get an application in and there's some mistakes or some misinformation or what have you. Right. And then it can, you can be delayed another six months. Right. So it really uh, How many tests do I have to take on exam day? All right, so if you're going for a specialty classification, such as C20 in your case, right? There's two exams. There's a legal side called law and business, and then there's the trade side, which depending on your expertise or what you're applying for, the trade portion. So mm -hmm. two tests, pretty extensive. You get three and a half hours generally for them, about 100 or so questions on each test, and go ahead, do your best. Right. Uh, one thing I do remember, uh, about taking the test was that it's a it's like a it's like a touch screen yes. test. So I mean, you're you're they give you like a whiteboard and a marker and a dry erase, and so you can work out your problems on the board. Um, any notes that you had in your head before you go in, you can like write those down. You can jot those down real quick. That really helped me out um, with some of the math equations that you need. Um, and then, and then all the whole test is like touch screen, and it uh, it does allow you to go back and correct anything or take a, a second look at the test uh, or whatever question you were unsure about earlier. Right. So a nice. little bit more about the test. You walk into this building, you show them your photo ID, they assign you a special seat, and you get a little d dividers there so you can't cheat off anybody. Right. Of course, touch screen, like you mentioned, uh, test is multiple choice. Like you said, you get that whiteboard, dry erase marker, you get a basic calculator, keep in mind. Uh, then you also get a booklet, right? right. If you have take for the trade portion, you get a little booklet, has your blueprints, spec sheets, all that jazz in there. And you kind of go into this exam, reading the questions, skip through them, uh, and make a selection. You don't know if you get it right or wrong, you just make a selection. Mm -hmm. So if you need to return to the question, review it, yeah, yeah, definitely. But at the end of the test, when you hit calculate score, uh, you gotta say a little prayer there and just hope you did it right. <laughs> I've done that twice. I've uh, I've done that little prayer. I've done that little prayer. I knew I knew for a fact I passed my first test, my HVAC trade, but my electrical test, I was like, 
uh, you know, and I had him score, and immediately it tells you whether you passed or not. It told me I passed, and as I'm walking out the, the door, retrieving my watch and my wallet that I wasn't supposed to have in the classroom and stuff, but they were the lady's like, well, you passed, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, a pass is a pass is what she said, and I'm like, Hey, what does that mean? Did I did I barely pass or what? <laughs> Remember, like, if you pass, you pass with 100%. So rest assured. Gotcha. So it's <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so what's involved in your home study courses? Um, is it like multiple choice type questions that you're asking in your study books and stuff? Generally, when you enroll in a home study course, you'll get, of course, the materials, the manuals for your trade and the law. There's a reading section, and then there's going to be a section on the practice questions, which we consider your bread and butter. A lot of the information you want, you're going through the practice material, and then after each test, there's a set of answers, but not only answers, a lot of the questions have explanations to them. That's That's, that's where the missing information is. A lot of people say, well, I don't know, I'm not ready for this. Well, read the explanation. If you can understand the questions, it doesn't matter how many ways they ask it, you got this. So there's practice exams in the book. But the one thing that really seemed to help me out the most um, was the app that you guys have. Yeah. The, the app is nice because wherever I was, if I had a free moment or two, I could literally just open back up my test and just start taking a, taking a test. Um, and they're the same tests that are in your practice books. It's just um, they're there now on your phone because you don't bring your books around everywhere. You got your app, though. Correct. So I wanted to let you know that those are super helpful for us out in the field when we're out trying to study and make the best of our time. You know, don't forget, even though you're on the throne, you can get some studying in. <laughs> what kind of things do we learn about in the law section of the test? A lot of us haven't even dealt with that portion of the business at all. Right. Okay, so majority of people, well, I should say people, contract, potential contractors, they've been in the field for four plus years, they know their trade, they're wizards. Now you put them in front of a paper, uh, write a contract, write a paper, or something along those lines, it gets a little tricky. So in the law and business, we'll pretty much run you through the different types of companies involved. The requirements, how to get the license, right? What you need to do after you pass the test, how to maintain your license, what the laws are there. Because of course it's the law and the business. De uh, definitely the contracts involved. You've got your home improvements, home solicitations, your new construction, etc. Wonderful things. You have to know all these things as a contractor, but not only. Also the types of disclosures you have to keep in there what you have to tell your customer, right? You want to know that also because you want to follow the law and not be doing something you shouldn't. Right. That's important. So we will cover all that uh, in the law, legal side, the law and business is what we, what it's called. Yeah. So wonderful thing. I thought it was really thorough. And part of the advice you give when you, um, when we start the material is, start studying the material is take our test, take our practice test, and then make sure you're passing them at 90% or better and then move on to the next one. And as long as you're passing all of our practice tests at 90% or better, we're pretty sure that you're gonna do just fine on the, on the, uh, the real test in the, in the uh, Correct. state board. Little correction though. We require you to get a minimum 80%, but if I, in my class, yes, I always say, get 90 or higher, then okay. you know you're coming in there, you have nothing to worry about. Okay, so 80%. Minimum, gotcha. but in my class, you got it right, 90. <laughs> So um, there's some DVDs and or audio CDs uh, that come with certain packages, um, a math review, a general knowledge, and a health and safety DVDs. Um, is there anything that you could uh, let us know about those three DVDs? Okay. Depending on which uh, what you do, you can get an option for both DVDs and audio or just one. Uh, if you drive a lot and your vehicle has a DVD CD player, and just pop those in. Oh. Anytime you travel, um, most of you will agree, even your viewers here, uh, that audiobooks are not a really good way to pass the time, right? Right. And why, why not just use all your traveling time instead of listening to some radio or music? Just get prepared for the test, right? right. right? Audio, really good way to go. Now, the DVDs are pretty awesome, especially if you, um, you're looking to just see that 3D illustration, how it actually works. Yeah. Get that knowledge a little bit more in depth. Yeah. I was sitting down at my laptop or I was sitting down at my desktop computer, so the audios or the the um, the DVDs made more sense to me. But I didn't even think about it like that. When you're driving, put that thing on loop and just let it go. You know, let it just keep you know repeating the message to you over and over. I personally found the information uh, in your health and safety DVDs 
um, to be most helpful when it came to subjects like trenches and ladders uh, and scaffolding, stuff that I haven't really worked with much out in the field, but you're going to get asked those questions on the test about like, you know, what's the maximum length of a, you know, ladder or of a certain type of ladder and things like that. And your information covers all of these tiny little details that we don't even think that they're going to cover, but they might. You know. Correct. Safety is a really important one. Uh, there's a lot of saying, you know, we know what's right, we just kind of lazy, we don't want to do it. Safety is very important. Cal OSHA, which is the California Occupational Safety and Health Administration, they really do follow that Title VIII, which is pretty important. All the regulations for ladders, trenches, scaffolding, I mean, you name it, personal protective equipment, your fall protections, all that jazz, beautiful. You want to have the details, you want to know how to answer the question, and how to perform properly in the job site, being safe in true. everything you do. That's it's very important. True. I, I know that just being out in, the, out in the field on my jobs now as a contractor, I, I reflect back on some of that information about, you know, like fall protection and things that I didn't even really think about it, you know, before I got my contractor's license. But now that I have that information in my head um, and I learned it, now I know it and I use it out in the field. So, And remember, we always improve. We never stop being safe, right? Always keep going. Right, right. The math, the math DVDs uh, are very helpful because they, they help you figure out, they help you understand the way the state wants you to figure out these equations. Um, because, you know, you're, you're looking for a, you know, what percentage of blah, blah, blah is left over. And then, you know, there's like two or three ways that you could find the answer to that. But what's really important is how does the state want you to answer that on the test? And I remember that from your in-class session we learned uh, how important it was because there's you know 20 of us guys in the class, uh, and I you made it very clear to us that there's a specific way to figure these equations out. And so. here's what I always say in class: when you take the real world and then you take the test, keep in mind it is a state test after all. <laughs> yeah. Apples and oranges. There's still fruit, right? But you got apples and oranges here. How you do? How are you so used to doing things in the field? It may not always be up to code or up to par that what's required actually. So our math review, it does a really good job explaining those little tips and tricks, how to calculate it properly, especially, you know, basics like for materials you always want to round up. You're always going to order more. Mm -hmm. Waste, spillage, whatever the case. Very important to know. Very true. Very good. Well, um, I don't really have any more questions out that I um, outlined for this interview, but um, do you have anything else you'd like to add um, for yeah. potential customers? Absolutely. If you have the four years of experience, go for it. Remember, all you have to have is your boss, a coworker, supervisor, someone to vouch for you. Just have the want to do it. Yeah, because it can be done. As you can see with Greg, <laughs> yes. very successful, honest, friendly, and best of all, just very fast. <laughs> just amazing overall. Well, thanks so much for your time. Awesome. I really appreciate it. You the man. All right.